Father, we know that we are not heard for our much speaking or our particular eloquency or anything along that line, but we are heard because of your word, of our faith in that word, and especially the faith of this hour revealed in the word of this hour that we have such confidence in. Be given to us, but what you have shown, Lord, by various ways, and we thank you for the care that you exercise over this service, Lord. We ask you to hear us now because we are believing that we are one of the we receive. Be a part to word, even as the word came to the prophet. So, Father, we thank you for your care and what you have done for us, Lord, and what you will continue to do for us. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, last week we were still talking about the question that had been brought to us, which I know many people are still uh, concerned with. And I do not blame them for being concerned. The only reason that I myself look at this question with a jaundiced eye is because I never am certain as to what the preacher has in mind when he wants to enforce it on the congregation. As is the case of this young woman who was vowed out to marry a man who was worldly and she was worldly. And when she came to the Lord Jesus Christ, she said, the Bible said, I cannot be unequally yoked. I will not marry him. Now, evidently, the pastor's attitude is, I don't know what to do about this. <clears throat> or he is demanding of her that she admit she's already married to the man. Because the vow was there. Now, <clears throat> I believe that this is an absolute misunderstanding of what Brother Branham was saying according to the Word of God, which Brother Branham could not say anything outside of this book. Now, let's understand that. He took us back to the book, the Bible, and quoted from it. <clears throat> now, I don't think anybody in his right mind would argue the fact that even though the Israelites actually united their children rather than the children united themselves so that the bride and groom were the choice of the parents Yet, nonetheless, there was a wedding ceremony. And we understand very well that Brother Branham was aware of that wedding ceremony. So, <clears throat> we want to read again what Brother Branham said about this business of vowing out. And in marriage and divorce, we read to you more than once, this is an awful strong thing. I didn't know how to bring it out. What will I do when I have men and women sitting in my congregation, some of them been married twice or three times, good men, good women, all mixed up, what's done it? False teaching, exactly. Now, <clears throat> let's say that they have false teaching. Well, what about those that had false teaching and still didn't marry two and three times? Well, we have, I came out of churches that had false teaching. On this very subject, according to Brother Branham, who said, if you believe that one partner has to die before the other can remarry, you are plumb out of the ballpark. You go aboard. Then he said, if it's a matter of adultery, you're out of the ballpark, you're overboard. 
So this question is more complex in a sense than people want to realize or it is simpler than they want to realize. Because now evidently one partner does not have to die and that person can remarry. Or why did he say what he said? You got to look at it. <clears throat> also concerning adultery. Doesn't have to be even that. Actually, the prophet ended up by saying it was proven by your marriage you could not live together. So don't try to go back. Now, we could look at this subject a long, long time. But I don't intend to take all the ramifications of marriage and divorce. So we just look at number one, false teaching, exactly. But there's a number two, not waiting on the Lord. So therefore, you can have false teaching and wait on the Lord and have a perfect marriage. You can have true teaching and not wait on the Lord. and You're messed up. Otherwise, I don't know what he's talking about. Why bother talk? Now notice, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. <clears throat> In other words, there is no court, there is nobody can interfere legally before God if that marriage was ordained by God, by these people waiting upon God. And that's the key right there. Now let's read on. When you get a direct revelation from God, that's your wife and the same thing, that'd be the woman, that's yours the rest of your life. Now what if you didn't get their revelation? It means that you could have a separation on this side and certainly if it's on this side and it wasn't right, it ain't going to be right on the other side. See, but what man joins together, anybody can put apart. Now listen to the rest. But what God has joined together, no man better dare to touch it. Whatsoever God joins together, he said, let no man put us in a watch. Not what some half-drunk magistrate or somebody else put together or some backslidden preacher. Now notice what he's doing. He is combining your vow with the legal instruments of the land or you're not married. Now, if I proposed to my wife and I said, I know you're for me, and she said, I know I'm for, your, I'm for you. We have prayed about and God vindicated that thing. There is still this legal ramification. Whether God or the devil put it together, in the marriage vows, in the proposal, you've still got to have somebody perform that ceremony. Now make up your mind. You say, well, then you're halfway married. And according to what this woman did, she better get married all the way. Do you mean to tell me any man of God that has anything to do with the Word of God is going to tell a woman or any man to go against the Word of God that said, don't you be unequally yoked, and it's in two propositions. It's number one, the proposal, and number one, the binding of whoever performs it according to law. Yet the same preacher knows you cannot, you should not join two people unequally yoked. So now this man becomes a part of a felony. Forget it. I wouldn't touch that with a 40-foot pole. I never marry anybody who's been married before. I don't understand the ramifications. You know my stand here 100%. You get married, you've been divorced and remarried, you're 100% divorced, remarried on your own apart from me, but I will take you as a brother and sister. I would not turn anybody aside because I don't know what's in the books. Only God does it. So what about communion? You drinking damnation out of yourself, not unto me. 
I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just telling you I made my stand what I believe the prophet taught what I saw him do. And I tried to buy it 100% and buy it. <clears throat> not some half-drunk magistrate or something else put together by some backslidden preacher with a bunch of creeds in a book that would let them do anything in the world and the word of God laying right there. See, I'm talking about what God joined together. Now, is this preacher willing to stand there and say, you're married to that man, now I'm going to take part in joining you. Oh, no, I won't dare do that. I'll send you to somebody else. Well, he, he better declare himself just where he stands. Or that's going to be just like Valdez, the old man, not the younger guy. When a woman came to his church <clears throat> and her husband, she had been divorced, and she married this good man, and he took good care of her and good care of the children. And Valdez says, my woman, you have got to leave that man. I guess the man was divorced, that was it. And you've got to leave him. You're in adultery. And she said it didn't ring a bell. What is she going to do about it with those children and all? And according to the courts, <clears throat> free to marry the man. And as she prayed... She came to one resolution. She came to Reverend Valdez and she said, yes, I will leave him. Are you willing to take responsibility then for me and my family? Now that may not be 100% scriptural, but listen, you have got to deal with things and not just throw them to one side. And I say, you're married, you stay that way. I don't know what to tell you anything else. And just pray to God and just keep on going as good Christians. Do the best you can. Because you may be like a friend of mine <clears throat> who really got torp after marriage and divorce and because he had divorced his wife because she was actually a street prostitute when it came down to it. Yeah, I don't think he knew if all the kids were his. There was a whole flock of them. And he married this widow. They were all, went to Brother Branham. They were good friends of Brother Branham. They are good, very good friends of mine. Known for years. And they said, Brother Branham, what about us? Oh, he said, you're perfectly safe and secure. You were meant for each other, and you should have had each other in the beginning, but you didn't. Now, now you're going to hit the guy in South Africa who will say, well, that's just Lee Vail. He ain't no prophet. Well, I got news for you. The Bible was written by men that were Jesus Christ. And they knew exactly how he conducted himself and what he did. You got a problem with me? That's your tough luck. I've got no problem. But I want you to realize this. Brother Branham is saying right here that the joining together is not just you and that person making a vow because that half-baked, cockeyed, drunken, J.P., judge or anybody else wasn't there when you made your vow and proposal, and neither was that idiot preacher. So you got to get your vow together with the drunken bums and the idiot preachers after you're done vowed, or you better get with someone with the Word of God. Now let's go to Scripture and find out the absolute what the Bible says that this woman now having been converted, what does the Bible say? Where do we go? We go to Romans, the sixth chapter, and we read exactly what the Bible has to say about what we're dealing with. It says in 16 to 23, Know ye not that to whom ye you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are unto whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Now the only obedience there positively has to do with the obedience of faith, which is a revelation that you know that you're doing the sacraments, the worship and the rightful things toward God. For what you're doing then is evil. But, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. That's the obedience of faith. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Now he's going to argue and reason so they'll understand what he's saying. For as you have yielded your members, members servants to uncleanness and iniquity to iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. 
For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Being made now free from sin and become the servants to God, you have, you have your flesh, your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it says right here, if that woman continues the way she was, what does it say? Death. Now, you can't have your cake and eat it. <clears throat> All right. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the second chapter. Uh, 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. As I gave the illustration the other week about the uh, young, young a person that I, I knew positively had been engaged two times, and then he, both girls proved uh, that their character wasn't right. He thought it was, but they betrayed themselves as to their character. He said, there's no way we can consummate this marriage. The ceremony is off. The whole thing's off. And yet Brother Branham congratulated him in getting the right girl and married him. Brother Branham wouldn't even marry his own son whose marriage was annulled. The kid did not get a divorce. The parents annulled it. Now what are you going to do in the face of God? Brother Branham says annulment's the same as divorce. Hold it! Not when your parents rip you apart. He wouldn't even eat a meal in his son's home until afterward, just previous to the time he passed away. Brother Branham was a stickler and a half. But I can tell you other stories and I won't do it because it might be too personal. And Brother Branham com commenting to me one day, complaining as I would complain to him. And he said, Lee, I don't understand it. He said, these young men carrying on, he was talking to sexual intercourse. He said, don't they think that I know what's going on? And I'm not naming names. But let me tell you, I have proof of the marriage in spite of that condition to another person or persons. So a brother Branham then did not live up to the word. I just think you don't know the word. You're back in Pentecost or some organization where you refuse to listen to brother Branham according to what he is saying. Still listening according to what you think. I have read what he said here on page 45. Some drunkard putting you together. The drunken bum wasn't there when you proposed. He never stuck a pin in you and said, this is the one. So you better be careful. So while well, Brother Vale, if that man is still in doubt as a minister, what would you do in his shoes? If I was still in doubt and I worried about it, I would simply commit her to God, the God that he claims saved her. And if he's not big enough to help her and guide her, and he isn't big enough to save her, I think too many people are too many people. Second Corinthians 6 chapter 14 to 18. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And there again, this is a revelation. And what communion has light with darkness? Again, revelation. And what concord hath Christ with Bel Belial? Two headships. Can't serve two masters. If you deliberately marry an unsaved person knowing that person's unsaved and you claim to be born again, you now have two heads. You are a liar. Now you say, well, you can understand why he gets so angry to the point of bitterness. 
where people want to dabble in people's lives and marriages and everything else to put them together, tear them apart, to take their money to do this and the other thing. I hate it. And I would take a four by four and smack them across the teeth. Yeah, I'm vengeful. I admit it. You're not looking at a pretty guy up here. I'd give him a taste of hell to go to hell in. Why do they do that to God's people? You are not my heritage. You are God's heritage. And you show me where I've treated any one of you wrong. I've stood up for my ministry. That's all you can say. If they ever treat you wrong, you're liars, and I'll take each one of you and prove it. Now you say, you're not talking love. I'm talking like John. John was full of love. Oh, love, 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 love. The apostle of love. But when Diotrephes came against him, to take away his office. He wasn't all love, 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 love. Oh, yes, he was. He stood up for what he knew is in Christ Jesus and his ministry to people who loved the Lord. According to the word of Almighty God, do you want two heads? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? What are you talking about? Your body is the temple of God in the living church. You are the temple of the living God, and God has said, I'll dwell in them and walk in them and be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean, and I'll receive you. Now listen, and I'll be a father unto you, and you'd be my sons and daughters, saith the Almighty. And Brother Branham said, <clears throat> if a man would tell his wife she cannot go to church, divorce him, vice versa. If you cannot pray, divorce. If you cannot take the word, divorce. Now you're going to set a trap that this woman now converted is going to, because she had a, made a vow back in the old days. She sinned in making a vow. Now let me ask you a question. Does the blood of Jesus Christ wipe away every sin except that one? I went to Brother Branham on, the, on his statement. He said, now, you ministers, when I talk about this, a minister can't have more than one wife. He said, when I preach marriage and divorce, you come back to this. I went to him. And I used John Martin because everybody was on John Martin's back, and I wanted to get him off John Martin's back, and I wanted to get off of John's Martin, Ma John Martin's back. Because we had a letter that positively said when Jack Bell asked him, <clears throat> he said, could John Martin preach in my pulpit saying he's been married, divorced, and remarried? And Bill Branham wrote in his great big bold handwriting, yes, I would have him preach in my pulpit. So I brought up the question. And Brother Branham was very grieved. He said, Lee, if God cannot forgive a man for that, what can he forgive him for? I was humbled in a split second and less. And I said, Brother Branham, forgive me, you're right. There's only one unforgivable sin. I consider to have a pretty high IQ and I'm quite intelligent, but you can see how stupid even I was. You see, even I, sure, because I was around the man for years. I asked this question having studied very thoroughly the seven church ages and other sermons and studied with him when the book written. Then I said, Brother Branham, what do you mean then when you said this? Why, well, he said, Lee, that refers in my thinking to polygamy. Now you go to the Aramaic, which is supposed to be even more original than the Greek, which I don't know, but I suppose it is, and right in there you'll find the word polygamy. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you something. I'm not, I'm not saying now, just admit it, you can do what you want and you can revoke your vow. I am not saying that. I'm just telling you the conditions concerning these things that come into the church. <clears throat> so, we're not afraid to look at anything and everything that Brother Branham said, and I don't have everything before me as to a matter of quotes, but I'm not afraid to bring up the quotes 
that seem to indicate and do indicate that you'd better be very careful. Now listen, Brother Branham says in a sermon, this is in the Hebrew series, separate yourselves, don't separate yourself. Don't yoke yourself up with, an un with unbelievers. <clears throat> now that would have to do as a general statement, not only concerning marriage, but concerning business and concerning churches. Come up among them, be a separate. Now watch. Young men getting married, or a young man getting married, marrying some girl that don't believe, or some young girl marrying a boy that don't believe, shouldn't do that. I don't care how cute he is or how cute she is and what those big eyes she got, and all that will fade out one of these days. But brother, your soul's going to live forever. You better be careful what you're doing. She isn't a real believer, or he a real believer. Don't you yoke yourself up like that. Stay away from such. It'll cause you trouble down the road. <clears throat> now, did he mention anything then about people that intended to get married? He doesn't qualify anything because the statement is blank concerning everything. It's the legitimate statement <clears throat> that you cannot yoke with anybody that's an unbeliever. <clears throat> It'll cause you problems. How many people have done that in business and found that they're sore of the truth? We all, we all find trouble by doing this very thing. We don't listen. God called men or women. No, God calls men or women. When he does, he calls a separation. Now, that's what the real trouble with the churches is today. They don't want to separate themselves from the old carnal believer, unbelievers. That's why we can't go any further. We just get <clears throat> in that carnal flow we say, oh, <clears throat> Jim's a good guy. He, he, he doesn't drink. He's so-and-so. He doesn't go to pool, pool rooms. Uh, I could go with him, of course, but I don't play. In other words, all the excuses. Now, here's something else in the Hebrew series. What a blessed privilege that that man, uh, no, what a blessed privilege that man has that challenges him to follow the Lord Jesus. Now, it's a blessed privilege to hear the challenge of God to separate himself from all the, his carnal associates and follow the Lord. And if any person seems not to behave himself rightly and to present himself as a Christian but love the carnal things, it's best for you to hunt another partner right away. Partner? Partner. Well, hey, that could mean you're married. He didn't say that. He's talking the subject of single people as far as I can understand. I couldn't put it any other way because he talks about a man, a woman, same thing. That's right. And if no one will walk with you, there's one who's promised to walk with you, and that's the blessed Lord Jesus. He will walk with you. In fact, the apostle Paul says, it's best if you just dump everything and live for God. But you can't do it after you're married. But before you're married, you can make your vow if you're able to, if you're gifted. <clears throat> and remember, the Pharisees went to Jesus and said, can a man put away his wife for any cause? That was what the um, Hillel said. Nemonides said, no, no way. You had two types of philosophers and great students back then and great teachers, Hillel and Nemonides. <clears throat> and Hillel says you can do it for any cause. It doesn't matter. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. You read what Moses said. And you're going to come to the place where a man could just about trump up something on his wife and get away with it, except, in the, except God knows the heart. You read it all, what it says. They might find some place. I don't want her to take her back. I'll get me another flusy. That's what he wants anyway. Some sex spot. <clears throat> hey. Okay, let's go on. Marriage is honorable, but it should be entered into prayerfully, reverently, and genuine love for that woman will bind you together forever. What you bind on the earth, I'll bind in heaven. Uh, when they walk down the street yonder, she may be old and gray and wrinkled, but that same love you had for her when she was a, a beautiful young woman, you'll still have. And you as the man may get stoop-shouldered, bald-headed, wrinkled-faced. That's sure accurate. And everything else. But she'll love you just like you did when you sat uh, with your wide shoulders and curly hair, I guess it waved goodbye that particular time. He said, that's what it'll be if it's really God. 
for you should be looking to the time when you cross the river yonder, <clears throat> when you spring back again, young men, young women, to live together forever. That's God's eternal promise. He said he would do it. Not only that, we'll get to in a minute, he swore he would do it. So you see what you're looking at here. You're looking at the fact that <clears throat> the word of God has been constantly broken by people evaluating men and women, each other, on the basis of the carnal instead of the spiritual. See, like Brother Brown has said about the young girls criticizing the old girl that had a spare tire, you know, the hair done up her head, and he said, she's got a, a character you know nothing of. Now, he said, yesterday morning we were lying in bed a little and the children didn't have to go to school and we got to speaking about different things and, and that how, what was hatred? And I said, hatred had a beginning, so it has to have an end. Love had no beginning, so it has no end. Hatred is forever. Love is eternal. Hatred begins and hatred will end. Love never did begin. It will never end. It was eternal, see? And when a man loves a woman and marries her because she's just pretty, there'll be an end to that. But when a man finds a woman that he loves and he don't know why, but he loves her, and she finds the man that she loves no matter what he looks like, he loves her, she loves him, that's an eternal mate in glory. Death nor in nothing else will ever separate them because they are from eternity. And they stepped out into space, the space of time, and will return back to eternity. Eternity is dropped down in a body called time, then it goes right back to eternity again. It cannot perish. A woman that's beautiful, that beauty, beauty will fade <clears throat> just as sure as you're alive. When I accepted Christ, I was turned out of my own home. When I accepted Christ, my boyfriends, girlfriends, everybody threw me down. I went with a bunch of old people that had the Holy Spirit and believed in God to, to serve Him. The girls were down there in the church where they were different from the, what girls I had been going with. They looked different. They acted different. They were strange, and I was scared of them. They were different people. <clears throat> now, even in his state, though he was predestinated as a prophet of God, you will notice in his carnal state, though he drew away from the carnality because he couldn't help himself, he still wasn't able to join up with those that were spiritual until he himself became spiritual. You see what I'm talking about? There isn't anybody in the world that can have an honest-to-God marriage unless they're born again or a special divine act of intervention by God that you come together and saw it was he that did it down the road. Like Brother Branham said, you'll come to a time when you realize you always were saved. Now, there's some of you here today that I know that you weren't born again when you were married. But you did have that something in there which gave you the right and true marriage, and therefore, absolutely, you were joined together by God, and your lives prove it today, your understanding and faith prove it today, and you have an eternal companionship. And you can say what you want. That's exactly true. Now, let me tell you something here that you need to know. I have used the statement of Brother Brown as many, many times. It's a little tiny statement, but it means everything to me like nothing else has because I'm a very carnal type of person. I reason everything else, and you know that I do. All right, listen. He said the millennium is a further time of sanctification, <coughs> just growing up more and more in God. What we missed here, we're going to pick up over there and go on. And over there you will have the marriage and the, and not as we know marriage today, because marriage in the resurrection, being children of the resurrection, you are sexless in the sense of procre uh, procreation. You are not sexless in the sense of male and female. But what you have is that same childlike <clears throat> uh, beauty of uh, fraternizing with no thoughts of that which has to do with procreation or sexual desire. It just isn't there. So it is the true compatibility that we've always wanted and never did get. And it's going on with God. I trust you understand what I'm saying. I know you do. All right, listen. <clears throat> um, I don't want to read that one because it's maybe not too necessary.
Now, <clears throat> here's where we're going to get one that people can, can, can get confused with over marriage and divorce, but marriage and divorce came under the seven seals, and this didn't. <laughs> but I'm going to read you now. To my knowledge, I can't remember just exactly what... Uh, This, was, this, this question was answered in 64, and marriage and divorce under the seven seals never came into being <clears throat> as the answer until 1965. So don't forget to put this together as you hear this. Brother Branham, what is the meaning of annulment? Are people free to marry, or is this just another word for divorce? I would like some information. Let's sure they're married. As long as they take vow, they're married. Just like a boy. If a boy promised a girl to marry her under good faith, he's obligated to that girl. He's just as good as married her. The only thing the law does is give you a bill of rights to live together, to keep you from being common law husband and wife. But when a man tells when I marry you, honey, I'll take you for my wife, uh, will you take me? In other words, he's saying he leaves that out there, lowers his voice or something. He's married. Your vow is sacred. That's what marries you anyhow. There's not, no preacher can marry you, no magistrate nor nothing else. It's your own vow to God to this man when you promise you're married. But he doesn't say you don't stand before them and take your vows. So the man standing a drunken bum and all marrying you, it's not that. That's the legal part. You still got to make your vows. You're saying your vows right there. But what if you haven't come to that place? <clears throat> Then, all right, according to law, if the marriage isn't consummated, where does it place you? You haven't become one flesh, even though you made a vow, because the Bible is interested even laying with the prostitute makes you one flesh. You know what we're talking about now. See, you've got to, in my books, everything Brother Branham said is important. And you don't pit one against another. That's what theologians do, and that's what the churches do. I can take the Bible here and destroy every one of us. I can take Brother Branham and destroy every one of us. The Word has got to come together. He never denied <clears throat> that you have to stand before those that constitute the authority, whereby otherwise you'd live as common law which the law could, does not recognize a true marriage. You are not married, and you must obey the law of the land. I don't care how that law came into being. That's not the point. That's the same as Brother Branham said. Zionism put Israel in the homeland. God decreed it whether it's right or wrong. In other words, whether Zionism is right or wrong doesn't make any difference. <clears throat> it's like the woman praying. It's, oh, God, send bread. Oh, God, send bread. Oh, God, send bread. And the kids heard. And they threw a loaf of bread in the door. She said, thank you, Lord, for sending the bread. And the kids said, no, God didn't send it. We sent it. She said, I don't care, honey, if the devil brought it. God sent it. Zionism put Israel there. Zionism is, Zionism is hokey. Come on, I've read enough since I have 20 years of age to know these things. People still don't know that, that Rome has the gold and Israel has the paper. Are you sitting here this morning and can't put it together? If you don't understand what Brother Branham was saying, who owns all the stocks and bonds? You think that Boski was anything but a Jew? Come on, look it over. When Hitler walked into France, how come Rothschild wasn't completely destroyed and everything he had destroyed? I want some questions, answers. How come when Hitler took over Europe, certain people came to America with us, so loaded? Who heads the Federal Reserve? I'm not against the Jews. I'm not a Jew baiter. Brother Branham said they got the paper, so listen to it. Don't become a racist over the Jews. <clears throat> this is predestination, the plan of God. But Rome has the gold. Now I'm going to tell you something. I didn't dare tell you before because my time didn't fit in. I got a good friend who's over on the East Coast. And he's got a good friend who's an outstanding Jew. And this outstanding Jew has two outstanding sons. Number one, a rabbi in New York. Number two, a legate with an unknown office and title in an unknown place in the Pentagon straight from the White House. He takes papers to Europe every single week. For years, he would go straight to every place where the papers were indicated. Today, he goes first 
to Rome. Now, can you understand what I'm saying? Who runs the world? Rome. Years back, I told you that I believe that America built the image to the beast when the Marshall Plan came into existence, when they saved Europe for the Catholics and they gave the rest away to communism. I have apology to make. That was only the seed. That was only the seed. Today, Bush stands up as the number one man in the world and United States as the number one nation, bar none, we can lick the whole world with our hands tied behind our backs. And don't think we can't. But we're not gonna. Because Bush is now the great God who speaks with the big mouth, that talks about the gentle nation, but is now like old Teddy Roosevelt carry a big stick, speak with a small voice. And he's let the whole world know, and America knows, he doesn't care two bits about America, he's just number one. And the Pope says, George, sit down. Three men, according to <clears throat> Malachi Martin, were in conflict. Popey old boy, Georgie old boy, Mikhailovich. Mikhail Gorbachev ain't no more. And George Bush better sit down and shut up because the Pope knows he's number one and he is. <clears throat> All this ties in, don't worry. It's about time that people really know what the prophet said and why he said it and where we're going. All right. He says here, your vow is sacred. Not what that preacher says or anybody else, but it's what you say before him. And remember, in the mouths of two witnesses, it's confirmed. <clears throat> what if you took a woman and said, well, you're married to me and I'm married to you, let's go to bed. Well, that's a good start because that's what they do, usually before marriage even. <laughs> You know, the statistics show that amongst the so-called and absolute Christians, that the percentage of sex without marriage is just the same as the young people who are not Christians or infidels. Well, we're married, honey. We take our vow. I'm going to tell you something. The law is getting pretty good now, tracing these birds down and say, you've made the baby. You better support him. But really, she ain't got a leg to stand on legally because she's just calm in law. And I wouldn't want to be calm in anything. Right. I'd soon to be uncommon. Yeah. Uncommon with the word of God. That's not your vow, no magistrate, no preacher, nothing else. It's your vow to God. <clears throat> now, just me, he said it's your vow to God. What if he's got his fingers crossed and said, we're going to get married? Now, she's supposed to say no under every condition. We'll talk about that. What are you going to do when women become aggressive? It's too late. Bow to God. How many of you people, when you got married, knew that you made a vow to God? So I made a vow before God. Hey, the mafia that murders, the rapist, he does it all before God. You think God closes one eye for you, two eyes? I'm before God this morning talking here, and I'm mean as a snake. No, I'm not. I'm just kidding you. But look, you're before God. I have a hard job with this because my heart says, listen, with you it's right, but these guys it's not right. They're not going to listen anyway. Anytime anybody casts a doubt, <clears throat> that thing can take a hold pretty easily. 
because they're not reading the whole thing. If I make a vow to you, though I make it before God, it is not the same what we're talking about here. Why? Because God has said, this is your wife. God has said, this is your husband. What happened when God presented Eve to Adam? This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You say, brother, that I don't believe that could be happening today. Then you are not even a fruitcake and a liar and a disbeliever because God has changed. And if God and his words change, you ain't got a leg to stand on. Why call yourself a Christian? Why don't you admit you're an unbeliever and a heathen? I say, brother, Benjamin, I'm not meaning to get I'm just trying to show you the truth. I told you I prayed. My poor wife, I don't know if she prayed. She must have prayed because she had a lot of guys to turn down. If she'd have married a certain guy that thought the sun and moon and stars rose on her, if she, when she wrecked his car, oh, that's perfectly okay, my dear. Here's another car to wreck. She did it on me. She'd likely find out it wasn't so great. <laughs> he died a millionaire. She could have been a millionaire's widow. He married a girl who looked so much like her. It was pitiful. Before he died, he told her brother, John, I still love her. No way. No way. It wasn't there. Now, how could she fall for a gook like me? Because I needed her. That was my other half, the part missing. We have our differences, but pfft, what's that? You know, I look back and say, my God, you know, it's been a perfect marriage for the way she's been with me. <clears throat> Not with me, with her, because I'm the, I'm the tough egg. But I'm going to tell you something. When you know that's the one, you may not even know that's the one for a while. That's the one God gave me, and I wondered for a while. I thought, gee, now I hope I haven't made a mistake. Maybe we, we, most people go through that. And one night I had this dream and she belonged to somebody else and I knew that I knew that if she was gone, I'd die. Doesn't God do things in dreams? Can't you understand this is real? Sure you understand. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't real. You'd be someplace else with the goo down in some, penny, some church Baptist Methodist that didn't know nothing from nothing. <clears throat> All right, we're looking at this thing. The vow then is made unto God and I don't care in whose presence it is made, but, the, but the, the big thing is this, the vow has not been made to God, it's made before God, and these people marrying in most cases don't even have an idea of the sacredness of marriage. Now, I will say this about the Catholic Church. They're way ahead of the Protestants. They used to be anyway, because they said, you ain't going to get married and divorced and remarried around here, so you better be careful. Now they're getting goofy too, like the Protestants. Too bad, too bad, too bad, too bad. No, oh, too bad. <clears throat> See? Now he says here, your vow is sacred. That's when you're, that, that's what marries you anyhow. That's true. No preacher can marry, no magistrate, nothing else. It's your own vow to God and to this man when you promise you're married. Now he's telling you when you're married. So I want to marry you. You want to marry me. All right, that's a ball in motion. Now you go before you're supposed to do it. Now before Almighty God. You're married, period. But not before that time. I told you how it was. I, I asked Roy Borders to send a letter out <clears throat> because I let him take over the printing. I didn't want to do it anyway. I'm a smart job. Be a printer, a writer. I preach, teach. No, he wouldn't do it. Well, he still could have got that in his big, bold handwriting. They said, we were engaged to be married. We found we weren't suited. Are we married? He said, no, you're not until you get the legal documents. See, they're not putting this together. How many true legal marriages do we have this morning in this church? By pure grace, a whole bunch. Thank God. I look at you, young, I can, Lloyd, you talk with Lloyd and Don. 
Even the preacher married and said, there's something different about you kids. You're meant for each other. This is God. Lloyd knew it. I don't think they listened to Nat King Cole when he sang that song, They Say We're Too Young to Love. I don't believe they went by Nat King Cole. <coughs> Lloyd was a bit of a hophead. Don a whole lot younger. Came across the path of salvation. And soon as they heard the message, they knew this was it. Soon as he went down to Jack Bell's, what happened? His hair and his beard came off. Oh, yeah. The hippie part and all was gone. Listen, there are people sitting here. There is no doubt in my mind that I don't care what you thought and when you thought it, God was in your lives. Amen. Or do you think I want to pat not pastor, but teach here? I don't want pastor. Brooks is your pastor, and he's a good one. He believes like I do. Don't worry. I'm not, I don't bug you the guy to make him believe like me, not for 15 seconds. He can do what he wants. That's his business. But I want you to understand we're putting it all together here. You don't skip something you want to skip because you heard something else. Yeah. See? <clears throat> Your vow sacred. Look, you say, Brother Branham, is that you said you'd only answer that by the Bible. But did you want the Bible on it? Raise your hands and so on. Joseph, now what? Joseph, her husband, being a just man, her espoused husband, always called her husband, uh, being a just man was, was mindedly to put her away privately on this wise but before they came together. Now, he's not quoting that in, in, in actual sequence. The Bible actually said Joseph, <clears throat> her, before she came together, Joseph, her husband, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And being a just man, you see, and being, being tender and kind, he could have put her away and, 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 and brought her before the people and all. He said, well, if I got to do that, I'll do it in such a way nobody catches on. Now, what trust and love he had in her to even do that? Because they say her child was by a, an illegitimate child by a Roman soldier. They still say that. Brother Branham didn't con that up, con it up out of his mind. That's absolutely the truth. It's history and everything else. <clears throat> but he was her husband according to the vows that were made, and she had to be faithful to him no matter how long it took them to get together. That was accomplished. But there still would be that ceremony. Now, we're looking at that particular time, and you will notice Fear not to take unto thee, Mary, thy wife, is no different. Get this. From when he said to Adam, this is your wife. He said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she's part of me. I'm trying to show you something. That marriage was 100% of God. And let me tell you this. If he'd have put her away, God would have had to slap him around. You say, that's not nice. I'd sooner be slapped around and get right with God than let him just let me go. I'd, I'd sooner have him do something to wake me up. I got waked up many years ago. Believe me, I got wakened up many years ago. That's why I've tried to go on the straight and narrow and stay with the word of God day in and day out. And it sure paid off because I got to the prophet. Bless God, that was my destiny. <clears throat> now you see, that was her husband because God said it was. And that's what he said before in marriage and divorce. So don't try to change it. We're not finished yet, but we're going, time's going to run out pretty soon. I want you to get this. Paul the apostle was speaking to the new bride and so was William Branham speaking to the last bride in marriage and divorce. He said, this is to my church, not anybody else. Well, we hit some more in marriage and divorce. I'll go into that for you. <clears throat> See? Now, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Already married. He's already promised. <laughs> Why? Because God did it. What if Adam had said, now, hey, that's pretty good, but I think you should try a little harder. He was one with God, and she was one with him, and she was from him. They were all one together, like Brother Branham said, the bride is today. We're right back to Eden. In a state of innocence, we didn't even do it. 
Now then, will Brother Branham expect less of anybody in this church that believes in this message or his own church or anybody that says they preach this message, which is his from the Word of God, and then you stand here and say, I cannot hear from God. I cannot have the right wife and the right man. That's why I say to you people, you young people, if you marry and botch up, don't ever come back to me and say, Brother Dale, could I marry you again? I botched up. I say, like fun, you can marry again. And if you go out there and be a whore, or you'll be a whoremonger, man. Don't come around this church. We'll turn you over to Satan. You can't get away with not paying your income tax, and neither can you get away from this word in this hour. You understand what I'm saying? I'm nailing this down the best I can because I will not become part of what the preachers are doing out there to people. I'm trying to save you and save you good. I don't abuse you. You prove I've abused you. People get my tapes. One guy said, well, Brother Lee Dale is too tough. What do you mean too tough? I'd like to go to his church and see what crap goes on in there. There's enough junk goes on in here now. Preaching a straight word of God without preaching something wishy-washy. What if I took the hands of the word off you? Where would you be? Where would I be? Come on. The life is in the word. Nothing outside this message is going to come to life and be eternal. And we are the word by the grace of God. See? Already married. He had already promised her. How was he already married? These two were married in the mind of God in eternity. Otherwise, whether Brother Brown would say he married, he, if you crossed your great-great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-great-great-great down to you to get the exact characteristics that you're, you are bringing forth today in a natural election as a child of God. And you know what? We all hate ourselves. <laughs> I don't mean to be some pup ignoramus. It's hard to get spiritual minded, but it's the truth. Maybe it's hard with me the way I preach and teach, but I'm sorry. And a little lady, if you promise to marry that boy, you're obligated to do it. If you marry another after that obligation, you will from now on any. How are you living in adultery? <clears throat> now, who is he talking to? Uh, Brother Dale, I believe Brother Branham was talking to the people down in the bar room. <coughs> oh, come on. Come on. He was talking to the bride. You better be careful, young people. That's why Brooks is <coughs> teaching as he's teaching. You'd better be careful, and I mean doubly careful. You parents... You can't make your kids do things, but they're out of your hands. In the hands of God, the minute you tell them the truth. But if you shilly-shally and don't tell the truth and stand with them, as Brother Brown has said, you make your home such a place that they'll love the home and love you and people come in and see Christ, then you are on the stand before God and your kids are on the stand. So I, I just let things go. You can't listen. My generation did it. We did it too much to our kids, though any time they asked a certain question, I would answer, no matter if my face got red or anything else. Never told them lies. But I was far neglectful in not telling them half enough. I just trusted it would be great that they could go down the right road. It didn't work that way. <coughs> Some of you are lucky because your kids have grown up real fine kids and you didn't do much about it. You can hang your head in shame this morning too and determine to be better at least by your grandkids or something else to make up for it. Come on, we're responsible. Don't, don't try to kid me we're not responsible. <clears throat> if Adam wasn't responsible, then how come he got in all that trouble? How come God had to have an interruption? Now I said, you'd be in adultery. And notice the same thing to a boy promising to marry a woman. Now who is he talking to? As Moses talked to Israel, the elect children of God, not to the Moabites. Right. Because polygamy is a thousand times better than Hollywood marriage and divorce, but it's still wrong. They can do it and they will do it, but it can't be named among us. What is the safeguard? Hearing from God. Now it's tough. Because a naked woman is a symbol of godhood in America. 
Why did the sons of God get all messed up? Because they saw the daughters of men were beautiful. The daughters of men came from Cain, and Cain was a giant. So they had that beautiful natural tan complexion. And a build, you couldn't believe how they were built. They're every man's idea of paradise. They got their minds entirely off of God. And they married him. Now it wasn't, God didn't say marry them. God said, don't you dare marry them. They did it anyway. How'd they get messed up at Baal, Baal PR? The very word in the Hebrew shows it was a sexual festivity, a fertility rite, <clears throat> an immoral sexual bash. First come, first served. Everybody have a great time. Pick anybody. As Brother Brandon said, the same thing loud is today. They have a hat. Throw your key in. Pull the key off. That's the woman you sleep with. <clears throat> what a wonderful nation. Jack Kennedy, menage a trois. Two women in one bed at one time with him. Listen, wake up, brother, sister. That's what you're facing, and your kids are facing worse than you are. You don't like blunt preaching? You're stuck. Why don't you go home? I don't mind if you go. But don't come back next Sunday if you have a good Mother's Day dinner. <laughs> That's the if. Could be in the making. I tell you, I'm sorry if you don't like it. I'm still sorry for it, but, I, but, but I'm not that sorry. I'm going to preach, quit preaching what I, what's in my heart to lay it on the line blunt because you got to be blunt or forget it. <clears throat> Even bluntness doesn't count with the world if it's uh, the bluntness that is of the world. Like our great hero, Magic Johnson. You ought to hear what Ryan Nolan has to say about it. Read it. I think I threw my copy away. He said he sent the wrong signals. He said, I've had one wife. I loved her in high school. We got married young, 25 years. We're still in love. I wouldn't have anybody else but her, and she wouldn't have any man but me. That guy's got more on the ball than many people who say they follow the word. Brother Brandon's message. Oh, he could put us to shame, that guy. <clears throat> but then he balls up other places. See, he gets all messed up because he plays ball on Sunday, everything else. How can you, how can you, how can you do things on the resurrection morning? Sell it, uh, how can you play baseball on Sunday, which honors the resurrection? Hooping up for a bunch of criminals out there. Who do you think runs the ball games? <clears throat> yeah. See? Don't you make your vow to anybody unless you mean to stick with it. Remember, there's the Bible for it. Joseph promised to marry Mary, and God said that was that. Read the Old Testament laws on that. See, the Old Testament law, if you promised to marry a man, you married another one, you're committing adultery. And it threw you out of the camp. Yes, sir, you have to keep your vows when you promise a woman that. She's a sacred vessel. Now watch, she's a sacred vessel that brings child life into the world again. So when you promise her, you must marry her. Now why did he throw that in there? What's the first thing a man says to a woman? We're going to get married, honey. It's okay to do it. And you hear the, 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 the big time, rag time jerks that say, the bees are doing, the, the, the birds are doing, let's so do it. Don't do it. If you do, you're obligated double to marry her. But the point is, if you don't go through the court of law, I got news for you. I told you a while ago, such as those cases came before Brother Branham when he complained to me, he knew what was going on, but he married them because they hadn't been before the judge or... So Brother Branham then turned on his own word. Don't you ever believe that, little kid. Don't you ever believe it. You just aren't reading the whole thing. They go together. <clears throat> what about if you, if you make a false vow? You think God's going to bow back your false vow? Again, I want you to notice, what, who to whom is this Bible written? 
The laws on marriage and divorce were written specifically for Israel going into the promised land, wherein I've read to you many times that Moses said, when the people see that you have this great word, this great law, they will stand back in wonder and awe. This was written to the elect of God. Who do you think Brother Brown is preaching to? The elect of God. That goes to every young person here. You better start learning about marriage right now, and you better learn how to contain yourself, and you better learn to pray to God and get the right one. Because when you mess up, it's your tough luck. And you make one move, you're living in adultery. I'm sorry, but that's exactly the way it is, and I, I can't pull my punches on it. <clears throat> you, you know, you people come to me and say, Brother Vail, what will I do? Say, so you you got to go to God. I can't tell you one thing, and I won't tell you one thing. No way, shape, and form, because I'm not a prophet. I do the best I can, and that's the way it is. <clears throat> and people even get mad because I tell the things I know privately from Brother Branham. I'm not supposed to do it. You know why? So they can take, hogwash their people and get a, get a claw on them. You can't say to the elite, they'll put you under bondage. No way, shape, and form. No way, shape, and form. <clears throat> See? Don't you make your vow to anybody unless you mean to stick with it. There you are. Remember, there's Bible for it. Joseph promised to marry Mary. See? Old Testament says the same thing. And she's a vessel for childbearing. <clears throat> now, there's a thing to remember right there. I'll leave this other part out, too. I'll get to these other things later on. Now you know you have to plan and look and pray when you're choosing. For we see by this the word of promise, she the bride, that, in, that a man would choose is going to reflect his character. Ha <laughs> ha. It reflects what's in him. Now can you imagine a man filled with the Holy Ghost take something like that to be a wife? He's talking about, you know, this, the world. I just don't see it, brother. Now maybe I'm just an old crank. But you know, I just can't understand that, see? Notice, for it's going to reflect what's in him. She is going to help him make his future home. <clears throat> That's why he said, look, you're looking forward to home. You're looking forward to children. <clears throat> That's what marriage is about. Some people never have children. But you better have one with character. Because if you did have children, What's it without a woman with character? Now, let me read the last one here, and I'm going to close with this. Notice now, she has a sacred trust of virtue that has been given to her, trusted to her by the Lord. God gave her that virtue, just as it was in the Garden of Eden. She can say yes or no. She has a sacred trust of womanhood committed to her that she must not <clears throat> break. The womanhood I'm speaking of here is her conduct, her character around men. Not letting every man... Look on those screens and see these movie stars kissing and hugging and slopping around over these women. A woman that does that is a, ba is a bad character. Now, I know that many people here think that's just acting. Have you ever read what Hitchcock said? Hitchcock said he liked to stand back and see his lading lady and the lading man slop over each other because that's what he literally said. And they felt they're in love with each other and they always made down to some motel where they got with each other. Then he said, I'd stand back and laugh. Later on, they found they weren't in love and they fought like cats and dogs. Now there again, are you seeing too many pictures of VCR in your homes? Because you're giving the kids the idea you can kiss. And get away with it. And let's keep reading. <clears throat> a woman that does that is a bad character. She might be virtuous otherwise, but see in her heart when those glands, sex glands, are in the lips. A man kisses a woman, he actually potentially committed adultery. Now notice the word potential. That describes the whole thing what Brother Branham is saying. Now this is known as one of the erogenous zones. Erotic zones. Call it what you want. And in that particular case, the lips are primary. And he said, they cross the sex glands, which means neurologically they are hooked up to the sex glands. So let a male and female start to kiss immediately. They are out of control as far as their desire is concerned. Now they may repress it. And in my day, that's what you did. Because in my home as a kid, we were literally heathen. I was not taught you could not kiss. 
But no matter how roused I got, I did not enter into any sexual act. But the danger was there and could have destroyed me. And I don't care who you think you are, you cannot kiss, period, and get away with it. And if you do not become aroused, there's something with you that either is a lying devil and you make you lie in your teeth, in somebody else's teeth, because you're lying about it. Or you just got some kind of a spirit that you'd like to tease somebody and see how far you could get to go because you weren't going to go anywhere yourself. Hey, that's putting it pretty blunt, isn't it, kiddo? Well, let's keep it blunt. One kiss is one too many. You say, Brother Vail, you're telling us trade secrets. Are you crazy? I don't have to tell anybody anything. You just naturally go for it. Did you have to read a book to get what I'm telling you? You think your kids won't grow up knowing exactly how to do certain things? <clears throat> Maybe not perfectly, but they'll soon get the trend of it. <clears throat> what is it Dr. Dobson says? The first thing you may shake hands, the next thing an arm around the shoulder, the next thing it slips down to the waist, and the next thing it goes where? One joint lower, right? Come on, it's in the books, it's on the radio, it's on the TV, it's nothing is hidden when it comes to sexology, let's face it. You think your kids don't know that already? They see it? Now, where's the straightforward, honest of God teaching to tell the kids, look, we know you got problems, we had them. The whole world out there is doing it, we know that. But why do you think there's judgment? You know something to stop me from looking at women years and years ago? I was just a tiny kid, well, a little kid, maybe 10, 12 years of age. We had a woman who was a trained nurse come to our town in what they call Chautauqua, which was a blessing because we had nothing else by way of entertainment. And she gave an entire lecture on syphilis. And how it is that the prostitutes out there were infected and how you could be infected and get sick and have children with blind eyes and everything else. And I said, no way, shape, and form will I do anything like that as long as I live. But today you got safe sex told everywhere. Oh, yes, 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 that's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And if you sell your kids short and I sell you short this morning, I may never preach again because this is an X-rated sermon and I care less. I will say things that Brother Branham only hinted at. And I say with him it is true, the man who kisses a woman and she returns that kiss or she starts it has the potential of adultery. Because I'd like to see you take your boat within 100 feet of Niagara Falls and not go over Because you know why? The kids are steamed up already. The hormones are running without even putting the clutch in gear, which taking a woman, hugging her, and kissing her. Now, if you think this is bad and the kids are wanting to do it, well, you can say, Brother Vail, I'm not coming back to hear you preach anymore. I think you better move someplace else. That's fine by me. But I'm not preaching for me and my kids, not anymore. I love you as young people and I love your kids even more than I love you. And I know Brother Branham sat with me that day and the rest, and I told him I couldn't understand at that time. He said, we'd love a lot of young girls at the side now. He said, Lee, you and I like to do? And I said, what, Bill? He said, see those young girls? I said, yeah. I'd love to go over there and buy them a drink, to buy them a soda, and sit down and talk with them, them and let them know what is in the future. But Lee, if I do it, they'd pick me up and throw me in jail. But I'm going to tell you, you can't pick me up here and throw me in jail. Oh, you could lay a charge and I could get thrown, you know. Sure, you could do something, but you couldn't do it honestly. You know that. You'd be just a bunch of crooks and hypocrites. Hey. But Brother Bill did not dare to go to those girls, but he's telling you right over the pulpit here. He's saying to young people. And then he said, Lee, don't they think I know what's going on? Sure, I could name you names. What good would that do? <clears throat> could I tell you about young one man, this young one fellow that slept with a certain girl, a beautiful young girl, then <clears throat> left her? Wrecked her life. Hastily, she married the wrong guy. She's divorced now. Oh, that was great because this guy believed Brother Brand to be a prophet. But Bill said, hey, don't they think I know what's going on? 
And Banks Woods one day said, you believe he's God? Yeah. Well, he said, it's strange you've been around him all these years and nothing's rubbed off. Why don't you start living it? So you see, I'm talking from being around the man. I didn't go around Brother Branham fishing and hunting. I went around talking the word. Then he talked to me the word. See? <clears throat> okay. Notice. She has a sacred trust of virtue that has been given to her, trusted to her by the Lord. God gave her that virtue, just as it was in the Garden of Eden. She can say yes or no. She's a sacred trust of woman who had committed to her. See? She's not a woman of bad character. And so therefore, all the nonsense you see in Hollywood, the slopping around, loving men and women and so forth, little girls look at that. See, little kids look at it. No wonder our morals are rotten and decayed and filthy because it is put before the children. That is right. It has to be that way in the last days. But he's talking to a bride. And you say, kids, look at it. All around are going to be doing it. <clears throat> Maybe you should take them to where the AIDS wards are and show them what AIDS does. Where they actually rot while they're living. TB has risen by leaps and bounds. Why? Because that's what AIDS patients get. And now when you sneeze and when you blow your breath, it's airborne. And any one of us here, and you kids especially know this, you fool around with that gang. You can end up with TB that's virulent and you'll be dead in no time. Do you want to lie there skin and bone? Go ahead. I know that sounds mean, but you see, I'm talking to some of you older ones that know what I'm what I'm talking about, you're old enough to understand. And your parents, in a sweet, loving way, if they want to do it, can do it. Leave them in a sweet, loving way, doesn't do it. I say it up here with the club to get the impression to make you know one thing. Look, I can make you laugh and you remember. I can repeat and repeat and remember. Or I can hit you so hard to the club, you don't dare forget. I prefer the last one. Hoping. We all get hit so hard, we'll begin to smarten up. And don't let them fool you on this AIDS business. And now they're finding out, and it's very hopeless that the carcinoma they're getting has its own little virus, even apart from HIV now. And HIV 1, 2, 3, 4, it's coming down the line. And they, not, not one uh, type of, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, cure is good for all 3, 4, 5, 6, and they all mutate. And you can blast them out of people's system with oxygen. Use ozone. But what if the ozone only goes so far into certain cells and it then throws up a barrier and mutates? Now the mutations come forward. You think ozone will touch it? Not a prayer. Nothing will touch it. You think we're not at the end time? Come on. At the end time of the days of Noah, the last person was going to go down in, his, in the ooze and the muck of his own deterioration, gasping his last breath, and God had pity and said, I'll take them all out. What did it? Radiation was one thing. Look at Russia. Oh finished finished unless they come over here and chase us out of America they haven't got a prayer there's hundreds and thousands of years down the road that those chemicals are still bubbling and the radiation going on <clears throat> listen understand you're at the last time you say then brother Bail, if that's the case why bother talking about the subject our kids May, will, grow, will not be old enough to enter into un, to an, uh, to a wrong liaison when it comes to sexual things. You can be 100% wrong. They're picking up 12-year-olds and 8-year-olds for rape. I'll lay it on the table right here in Dayton. You want to know the truth? I'm going to tell you the truth. I told you God always gives me the right things to read. You say, I don't think that's the right thing. That's your business. You think that. I think otherwise. <clears throat> so I'm not embarrassed to cover the whole thing that this question answers, asks. And I say this again to those preachers. I take my stand that William Branham categorically told us in 1965 that his message was to the bride, that his sermon on marriage and divorce was for the bride. It was instruction in righteousness for the people of Almighty God that sat before him that God had given him as their leader. And that's what I'm doing this morning. By the grace of God, I believe I'm absolutely preaching to a bride church. And I have the same words that the prophet gave to me on tape here, and he's giving to you. 
I made my mistake in my days. I don't want to see you make those mistakes because in my day we could get by with it. Today you can't. Why? Because the word wasn't there. Whatever some of you people did in the past is 100% forgiven you. There's no way you can be accountable <clears throat> because you did not have the truth. The seals were not open. The truth was not given to you. But this is a different thing today. Now raise your children in the light of this word, in the admonition and the strictness of this gospel. And remember, God will give you grace and your children grace because that's the promise. Listen carefully to me. I'm one of the last breed that was with Brother Branham. I could die tomorrow. Praise God if I could and will. That's great. Trouble is, I feel better than I felt the other day. It's your young people that will be going in. You'll be the one standing here in that day when the dead come out of the ground. If I'm in there, I hope I come out too by the grace of God, I will, to see you again and to see your children transformed in that moment take away from here. Is it worth it or isn't it worth it? Come on, tell me. Is it worth it? I want to know the answer. If it isn't worth it, forget it. Or aren't you like me this morning, hungering for further sanctification? You know this side of the grave, this side of resurrection. There isn't perfection. With living, pulsating bodies that want to do the will of God, that want to reflect God. Let me tell you, it started now. But people still don't believe time and eternity is mingled. Therefore, mortality and immortality has mingled. You understand what I'm saying? Well, I'll be honest, I don't myself. But I know it's true, and I know it's there. And as long as I testify to it, at least I'm a friend of the bridegroom if I'm not bride. Do you understand now why the millennium is further sanctification, why further growth and all? We have no reason to be disgusted. We have no reason to be <clears throat> to lock ourselves in to some type of a morgue and get and leave our faith on one side. But now's the time to rise and shine because the glory of God has come upon the people. It's true. It's true. Turn your tape on. <clears throat> The reason we're turning the tape off is simply because the phone's going to go out too. 